Hello, and welcome back to our IPATH Back to Basics education series. Our series is meant to help those that are new to the world of infection prevention and control, and also be a refresher for those that may be feeling they need one. In this module, we're going to take a look at the importance of environmental cleaning and disinfection. Here is a view of each of the modules that are available within this series. In this module, we will be discussing the importance of environmental cleaning. All modules are under 30 minutes in length. You can also locate them on our website or use, use this QR code to bring you there. Make sure you take time completing the module and feel free to pause when needed, as this is a pre-recorded session. By the end of this module, we hope that everyone will be able to differentiate between cleaning and disinfecting and the products utilized for each of those. Describe the common properties of a disinfectant and the importance of each one. Understand the different methods of common disinfection application and utilize appropriately within your facility. So what is the importance of environmental cleaning? Being able to maintain a safe, clean environment and minimize microbial contamination of surfaces is increasingly recognized as an essential approach to reducing the risk of healthcare associated infections for all clients, visitors, and staff within a congregate setting. In the PIDAC document, Best Practices for Environmental Cleaning for Control of Infections in Healthcare Settings, Environmental cleaning is recognized as the cornerstone of efforts and is essential for reducing risk of transmission in settings. To review this guideline, you can use the QR code which will take you directly to it. So before we dive into the contact, we're going to do a complete uh, quick concept check to test your knowledge. So here we have a fill in the blank question. So if you have a pencil or a pen and a little piece of paper, or you can just use your visual mind, we're gonna ask you the difference between cleaning and disinfecting is cleaning blanks harmful microbes from a surface where disinfection blanks the microbes left on the surface. So take your time and read it again if needed. Below is a word bank provided. Pause now if you need a bit more time to answer as we'll go over the answer on the next slide. So the difference between cleaning and disinfecting is that cleaning removes harmful microbes from a surface where disinfection kills the microbes left behind on a surface. We will explain the why and how in the next few slides. So what is cleaning? As we discovered in our concept check, cleaning is the removal of foreign material. So any dirt, debris, or contaminants that from an object. It is always the first step in the cleaning process of cleaning and disinfection. It physically reduces any contamination by breaking down grease and removing organic material. It does not actually kill the microbes, Cleaning only removes the organic material. Cleaning is done by means of mechanical action, a friction with your cloth or wipe, along with water and detergent to help remove the foreign material on that surface. This is when that elbow grease is really appreciated. What is disinfection? Many people believe that cleaning and disinfecting is the same thing. This is far from true. While we know that cleaning removes the majority of harmful microbes or pathogens on a surface when done properly, small amounts of microbes can still be left behind. This small amount must be then killed or deactivated on those surfaces. Deactivation means they're no longer harmful to humans. This process of killing and deactivating most disease-causing microorganisms on objects and surfaces is the definition of disinfection. The catch is disinfection cannot be achieved without proper cleaning. This is because disinfectant solutions and sterilants cannot penetrate all that organic material, soil, or debris. So let's visualize this. 
If there was a spill of organic material, let's say vomit on a floor, if we pour disinfectant on top without priorly cleaning up all that organic material, we would only be disinfecting the top layer of the vomit. The solution wouldn't be able to penetrate down and you have enough power to kill and deactivate everything within that mess. That's why we need to first clean up everything that we can. And then anything that you, you may or may not be able to see that's left over is going to be disinfected. So anything left behind. So that could just be microscopic pathogens. And so it's not always very obvious. So what surfaces require disinfection? It's important to know that not every surface requires frequent disinfection. It's typically only required when even the smallest amount of those harmful microbes can threaten human or public health. How is that determined? Well, first of all, we like to separate surfaces into two categories, low touch and high touch surfaces. Low touch surfaces, surfaces we don't touch often, are not typically disinfected unless they're contaminated. So for example, with bodily fluids. An example of low touch surfaces would be floors and walls. High touch surfaces, so those surfaces that come into contact with our hands often, they're also gonna become contaminated more often with harmful microbes. These ones require to be disinfected frequently as they pose a higher risk of transmission. High touch surfaces may include doorknobs, light switches, um, and many more. Most disinfectants are chemical in nature, which allows for quick effectiveness of, for surface cleaning. There are other options or tools, such as UV light or vapor application. However, for our purpose within congregate settings, we will focus on chemical disinfectants in this module. So chemical disinfectants can be deemed low, medium, or high, or sometimes regarded as hospital or healthcare disinfectants. This hierarchy is related to the amount of microbes they are able to kill or deactivate shown here on the spectrum. Looking at the image on the screen, we can see COVID-19 and influenza A are quite susceptible to disinfectants and most of these chemicals will work against them. So you see that at the bottom of the spectrum. Bacterial spores at the top of the spectrum are the hardest to kill. Those who are on path precautions for these types of pathogens for example, contact precautions for C. difficile require a separate set of cleaning and disinfecting protocols and also include a spe specific disinfectant called a sporicide. This is a typically an extra strong super duty chemical or gel. So now we will go a little deeper into what disinfectant products are, their properties and the difference between a disinfectant versus a combination cleaner and disinfectant. As we know, there are different methods for environmental cleaning or disinfecting. A variety of products can be used, but the process and products used for cleaning and disinfection must be compatible with whatever surface or equipment they're being used on. There is two-step process, which is to clean with one agent, such as soap and water, and then disinfect with another meaning you're going over the surface twice with two separate products. Two step equals two products equals wipe twice. The one step process is using one product that acts as both a cleaner and disinfectant. So you only need to go over the surface once. You want to make sure that you're always reading the label of the product you are using, as it will specify if it is a one step solution Example, it will say one step surface cleaner and disinfectant, or if it is a single solution, such as a disinfectant or a cleanser. Also keep in mind that any disinfectant wipes, even if they are a one step, should not be used on heavily soiled surfaces, and any heavily soiled particles should be removed and cleaned beforehand. Environmental disinfectants in healthcare are most commonly a chemical agent used to destroy or inactivate harmful microbes. Disinfectants have specific properties that everyone using them must be aware of. We're going to review those six properties here. Number one, it must have a DIN called a drug identification number. And this is provided by Health Canada and it 
designates them as an approved product. As always, there is one exemption, and this is sodium hypochlorite, also known as bleach. Uh, bleach does not have a DIN, but is acceptable disinfectant. Number two, an ex expir expiration date or shelf life. It's important not to use these products past their date as the concentration may have depleted to a level that is no longer effective. Number three, the concentration um, required for use. So products can either be ready to use or sometimes designated as RTU, or they may come in a concentrated form. The concentration form would require a dilution for safe use. So always check the bottle or packaging and ensure you know what your product is and how it is to be used effectively. Many companies will have the same product, but offered in two different forms. So as that concentrate or ready to use. Always check to prevent chemical burns and misuse. Number four, proper storage. So chemicals can't be exposed to heat or light as it decreases their concentration through evaporation. Most need to be stored in a cool, dry, dark place. An example would be a closed cabinet. Number five, manufacturer's instructions and safety data sheets, or SDS. Many of these chemicals you're exposing yourself to can be harmful if not handled properly. So it is important to know and understand what you're using. This is typically the fine print or the additional paperwork that no one wants to read. You may have a full environmental or team that within your congregate setting that can provide you a condensed information that you need, but there may be also be settings that it's you who are using it and you need to know so you're going to read that fine print. Anyone using the chemical needs to know what they're handling and be aware. Also read um, on there, it'll tell you what products it can be used on or what not. So some may be compatible with specific surfaces, finishings, or furnish furnishings as well. The final one, number six, that we've highlighted here is the contact time. So healthcare or hospital grade disinfectants typically have a contact time of 30 seconds or one minute to three minutes. And this ensures a fast and effective environmental cleaning. Whereas household disinfectants, their contact time can be longer. So we're looking at four to 10 minutes. So that would be your Lysol uh, brand or Clorox brand. You must always read the label to ensure the contact time and make sure the surface remains wet for that entire contact time. So the disinfectant has to stay on that surface for that, for that contact time. So sometimes this may require more than one application for example, with a wipe if it dries too quickly. So some of the major take home points for disinfectant products include the drug identification number, the DIN. Also it's important that the products must be utilized according to the manufacturer's directions, including the correct concentration, contact time, and if any PPE is required while using that specific product. It is important to check if the disinfectant is compatible with those surface finishings or furnishings and equipment that are getting cleaned and disinfected. One thing we always like to remind people is when applying disinfectants to food contact surfaces, a potable rinse of, with water may be required. The purpose of this rinse is to remove any chemical residual from the surface so food does not come into contact with it, resulting in, in ingestion that could be harmful. Also, if you have a food premise that's inspected by a public health inspector, they can let you know what products are actually allowed in the kitchen or not allowed in that kitchen as well. Okay, time for a concept check. All cleaner products require a DIN or drug identification number, true or false. The answer is false. All disinfectant products, except for bleach, require a DIN. If the product is labeled as a two-in-one, which is a cleaner and disinfectant, that would also require a DIN. So next we'll discuss the different application methods of disinfectants. Disinfectants can be applied to environmental surfaces in a variety of ways. 
The first method is a preset concentrate. It is likely a chemical supplier will set this up and also service the device. An automatic device dispenses the amount of required product to water ratio for you. These do need to be serviced regularly to ensure they are still mixing the correct ratios and the facilities using the devices must do their due diligence in checking the disinfectant concentration between services to ensure the correct concentration is being maintained. The second method is a concentrate bottle. This will be a concentrated form of the disinfectant that will have to be diluted by the user. It is typically used to fill buckets or pour bottles. It's important to note that if you or your facility are using the bucket method, so filling a bucket with solution and using a soaked towel to clean or disinfect, you do not double dip. You want to ensure you are changing the cloth after any dirty areas. The third method is a spray bottle. Spray bottles are typically used to apply ready to use disinfectants to a cloth and that is then to be used on the surface. They are not recommended in healthcare settings due to health concerns and the potential for the pressure from the spray to disperse harmful particles further than intended. If spray bottles are used, it is recommended to spray directly onto the cloth and never the surface. The fourth method is pre-moistened wipes. Many of you will be most familiar with these. It's important to note that these wipes can be one step or two step. Two step wipes will need additional cleaning of surfaces before being used to disinfect, while one step wipes will not. Be sure to always read the label to determine which one it is. Regardless of whether the wipes are one step or two step, they are not recommended for grossly soiled surfaces or for very large surface areas. The fifth method is a pour top bottle. This is a ready to use disinfectant product, which is to be applied again to a cloth and used on a surface. Next, we will go into more detail for the two most common methods, spray and wipes. So let's take a better look at disinfectant spray. As with other forms of disinfectants, sprays can also be either one step or two step. An advantage to using a spray is that no air will enter into the bottles which maintains effectiveness of the product. You are able to saturate large areas quickly. However, you must keep in mind that best practice is to spray the cloth and not the surface as we mentioned. One disadvantage of the spray is that any aerosol or trigger sprays may irritate skin, trigger respiratory sensitivities or allergies, and can also result in accidental eye injuries. Due to this, utilizing these sprays are not best practice or necessarily your best option within a congregate care setting. With disinfectant wipes, they can be purchased as just a disinfectant or a combined cleaner and disinfectant. Remember, we must read the label to determine what that is. Most hospital grade or healthcare graded wipes are the combined cleaner disinfectant and will state this clearly on the container. Typically, household wipes purchased at your grocery stores are either only a disinfectant or only a cleaning wipe. We have had facilities make this mistake, so I'm sure you know your products. We can't stress that enough. There's also hand hygiene wipes that are packaged similar to disinfectant wipes, so always read the label carefully. Wipes may become dry due to the past drying agents within this product. That helps with reduced contact time when utilizing the wipes, but also lets the wipes dry out quickly if the lid is left open. You must ensure that lids are snapped shut when not in use. You may store the container upside down on a flat surface to ensure the lid is shut and doesn't dry out. If wipes become dry, discard them. They must be wet to be effective. Adding water will only dilute the concentration and you will no longer be disinfecting with them. This is not a solution to the problem. Wipes are not recommended for heavily soiled surfaces as they are unable to clean and then disinfect appropriately when items or surfaces are grossly soiled. You must first clean the area separately, then you can use a wipe to disinfect after. 
So let's talk about some of the common high touch surfaces and low touch surfaces. High touch surfaces are the surfaces and objects that are frequent that have frequent contact with our hands. These can vary from facility to facility. However, some of the most common ones are doorknobs, hand and bed rails, light switches, toilet flushes, phones or tablets, and other commonly shared equipment. For low touch surfaces, those are the ones that have minimal contact with our hands. A few examples of those would be floors, walls, ceilings, mirrors, windowsills, artwork, cupboards, and drawers. And just to show uh, some of these common surfaces, on the left, we have our door handles, light switches, and handrails for high touch surfaces, and then some examples of low touch surfaces on the right. A reminder that when a facility is experiencing an active outbreak or just increasing symptoms and transmission, it's important to ensure high touch surfaces are being disinfected at least twice a day to help decrease that risk of further spread. So now we have our final concept check. Our question is, healthcare grade disinfected products typically have a contact time of A, 10 minutes, B, one to three minutes, C, five to 10 minutes, or D, 15 minutes? The answer is B. Disinfectants chosen for healthcare settings should have a short contact time of one to three minutes. The reason for this is to ensure fast and effective environmental cleaning. There are other disinfectants that have a longer contact time. However, the shorter the contact time, the more rapid the disinfecting process, the less time required for the surface to remain wet, and therefore the quicker it can go back to being used once it has dried. When disinfectants are applied to any surface, it's important for it to stay wet long enough to ensure that the contact time is met. This ensures that any viruses or bacteria are thoroughly killed. So now to recap the end of this education module, we should now be able to differentiate between cleaning and disinfecting and the products utilized for each, describe the common properties of a disinfectant and the importance of each one, and understand the different methods of common disinfectant application and utilized appropriately within your facility. You have now successfully completed Module 4, Environmental Cleaning. On the right side of the screen is a QR code that will bring you to all the modules within the Back to Basics series. Again, these are resources for you. Feel free to complete them in order or only the ones that apply to you. Congratulations, you have now completed Module 4. We are so glad to have been able to share this education module with you. Thank you all for participating. And as always, if you have any comments or questions related to IPAC, you can reach out to us at our email.